On this edition of Around BCC, we give the keys to the show over to the BCC video production class. The college's celebration of African American History Month kicks off at the Martin Luther King Jr. Breakfast. And we look at a men's basketball player who uses the sport to keep himself grounded. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. Classes are back in session as the spring 2013 semester is underway at all BCC campuses. For the past few years, we've taken the opportunity to turn over part of the show to the students in the fall video production class held at the Fall River campus. We are pleased that they decided to help us out once again this year. So here is Around BCC, produced by the COM 157 television production class. Welcome to Around BCC. I'm your host, Mark Souza. And I'm Tara Freitas. This month, COM 157 will be producing Around BCC for the college. Students have worked on compiling stories for an entire semester to bring you this program. In our first story, we interview Wayne Wood, the Director of Public Safety here at the Fall River Campus. Please introduce yourself and give us a brief description of your job. Sure. My name is Wayne Wood. I'm the Director of Public Safety here at the college. Uh, my main responsibility is keep safety on campus. Not only this campus, but all our other campuses also. Uh, and I patrol, I mean, I have officers, dispatchers, switchboard operators. It's basically to keep the campus safe. How long have you held, held your title here at Bristol Community College? I've been with the college for 15 years. Uh, I've been chief for the last 12 years. So I moved up pretty quickly here in rank. Can you tell us a little bit more about Be Notified? Yeah, Be Notified is like an emergency notification system. Uh, it basically notifies the students either by text messaging or their Access BCC account. It's to give the student a heads up if there's anything that's going on on campus. All right. Uh, are there any other alert systems besides Be Notified? We, not in place right now. I know we've been looking at maybe an emergency siren system on campus, but the B notification system is a great system. You can, like I said, telephone, text messaging, an email accounts. It can notify somebody immediately of any situation. Uh, we do have some uh, fire alarm system in L building that can be processed that we can talk through the system itself. So maybe eventually you might move the fire alarm systems like that. But all in all, I think with the response team and campus police, we can notify the whole campus pretty quickly. Can you tell us a little bit more about the incident that occurred on October 29th? Sure. We had uh, an incident that happened that caused us to evacuate the whole campus. Uh, what we did is we informed the, the president. The president made the call to evacuate the whole campus. Uh, we initiate, uh, we put be notified in progress, and, you know, we put the notification system on. Uh, notified the students that we were evacuating the campus. My officers, along with some volunteers, proceeded to evacuate every building on campus. And then everybody had to leave the campus. How many people do you, do you think were on campus on October 29th? During I'm going to say there was anywhere from about 25 to 3,000 students, faculty and staff, on campus at that time. Yeah, there was a it was quite a lot of tra uh, traffic. It was a little crazy. Uh, I mean, we, we, it was an ideal situation. It was like 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was The weather was fantastic. We did evacuate the whole campus. My main concern was to get everybody out in the parking lots. I wasn't really a major concern in getting them off the parking lots. So I was, my stress was to get the buildings cleared. Uh, it went smooth. I mean, we had somebody at the main entrance. Unfortunately, Ellsbury Street is the only egress off this campus, so it gets just in Ellsbury Street. Luckily, Bishop Connolly and Durfee wasn't evacuating at the time. So to me, it went pretty smooth, and people went off pretty, I mean, it took about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, probably just a little over an hour to clear the whole campus. And that's fairly decent. When we have a, a snowstorm, it takes a little longer. Did uh, either Durfee or, or Connolly have any uh, impact with the evacuation? Not at that time. Uh, 10 o'clock, it was ideal. They weren't even involved. And, uh, do you consider BCC a safe campus? I think BCC is a very safe campus. Uh, two years ago, we were the number one safest Massachusetts campus. Uh, we went down to number three, but that's not too bad. But we're, we're a very safe campus. My, uh, my officers and my security staff, 
does a fantastic job, I think, out there, keeping the campus safe. Thank you very much for your time. No, no problem, Connor. Thank you. Thanks for talking to you. Thank you as well. In our next story, we chat with Ryland Brenner, the theater program director here at the college. I am Ryland Brenner, and I am a professor and director of theater here at Bristol Community College. I run the theater program here. Well, the director has to cast the show, and I will explain to you how uh, creating a play works at Bristol Community College because we're a smaller version of the big commercial ways of creating a play. So we have the director. I also function as the producer because I'm bringing in all of the design team. I'm bringing in all of the uh, elements that go into supporting the making of a play, such as publicity, which we have here, and um, graphics for the posters, and all of the designers, from costume designer to um, set designer to lighting designer to makeup designer to special effect. And then the designers have crews and they are sometimes functioning as the members of the crew to build the show. In the meantime, I cast the show, I choose the actors, I put them into the roles that they're going to play and I then begin the process of rehearsal uh, that leads to the production. And the process of rehearsal includes uh, my developing a vision about the play, how we're going to do the play, uh, what style it's going to take, what, what, um, how the rhythms of the play work, how the play comes together as a composition. The club is just a, a, an entity that is uh, a BCC club with people, uh, comprised of people who really, you know, are interested in theater. So we go to shows, or we invite speakers in, stuff like that, but nothing to do with their acting. That was an overview of our theater program. Now we're going to look at the communications program offered here at BCC. Did you know there's a professional working television studio right here on campus? Hi, I'm Casey Castile for Around BCC here at the Fall River campus to talk about the television production class taught by Ricardo Ribello, and we'll be speaking to Benjamin Lee who is a communications major and a student of the program to talk about his experiences in the class. What intrigued me to take this class is because um, we get to work with cameras, uh, we get to edit, and we can do or learn a lot more than just using the camera. What have I learned in this course that I can apply to the field is uh, more into camera work, uh, uh, medium shots, full body shots, head shots, uh, directing, uh, the basics of di directing, basics of audio, basis, basics of graphics, uh, mostly everything to do with the TV studio. My favorite part is editing. Um, I just feel that you can put a lot of creativity to it and um, just put your own kind of unique skill into it. And I do plan on pursuing in this field because uh, I just think it's fun to me uh, being behind the camera. And uh, it's so fun to me that I even made my own YouTube channel and I made plenty of videos for that just for friends. Uh, and since I love doing that, I plan on making a career out of that. BCC had prepared me well in this field because I learned a lot more than uh, just hitting record on a camera. Uh, I learned so much more that I think I can make my videos on YouTube even better and being educated better uh, into this field and hopefully I can reach this goal. Next we will be bringing you some information on the college's recently renovated fitness center. The BCC administration is making strides in their attempt to promote good health in their college community. That is the reason why the Fall River campus now comes with a recently remodeled fitness center. The space is specifically designed to help the BCC community gain or maintain a healthy and productive lifestyle. 
Today, we'll be interviewing the director of the BCC Fitness Center, Diane Hamill. Uh, Diane, what are some of the improvements to come along with the recent renovations to the fitness center? What we have done, mostly one of the biggest things that we've done is we've um, gotten a brand new flooring in here on both our lower and upper levels. Um, we have partially rubberized floor on the part where the equipment is, and then in our group uh, group exercise area, we've got a vinyl type of flooring that's a little bit padded underneath, which is really nice for our group exercise classes that include Zumba, yoga, body, body blast, muscle up. We've got a number of classes that now that we've got the newer floor, it works out quite nicely. Uh, besides the flooring, we've got new lights, new ceiling, new paint throughout. We've got brand new lockers in both the men's and women's locker rooms. As you look around the center, some of the cardio pieces that we have um, are treadmills, we have upright bikes, we've got um, recumbent bikes, we've got a Steermaster, we've got quite a few elliptical pieces, we've got a rowing machine, so we've got a lot of cardio pieces here and, and the TVs really help out the students to kind of stay on those pieces and, and work out some of their frustrations. We also have a lot of weight training pieces. We've got 16 pieces of selectorized equipment. We also have dumbbells. We have a cable crossover system that people can use. Um, and everything's up and ready to go, so students can come on over now and get started. What kind of hours are they open here? Okay. We're open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and on Saturday, 9 to 1. We are open year-round. That's kind of important, because some students don't realize that we are open in the summer. It's very quiet in here, um, but we are open the same hours that we're open during the semester. Another uh, big factor I think a lot of students don't realize is that this is free. There's no fees to use the center, there's no fees to um, take a group exercise class, and you don't even have to commit to anything. So if you want to come into class on a Tuesday and take it, you just come in and take it. You don't have to come back ever, or if you want to, that's great too. So there's no commitment. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that we are just open for our students, staff, faculty, and alumni which keeps the traffic in here not crazy. So we're not open to the general public, um, which makes it nice for our students. Um, what you need to do to work out in the center is you need to have your Access BCC card. So that's the number one thing you need to get. If you haven't gotten it already, you wanna go get your card. That doesn't cost you anything either. The other thing we require is that when you come into the center, you wanna have proper athletic attire. So sneakers for your feet, sweatpants or, or shorts, whatever you have is great. We have you stop at the desk the first time you come in to fill out a new member form. And also if you're gonna be using our locker room facility, you need to bring your own padlock so you can keep your stuff safe while you're working out. Great, and just one more question. Is there any kind of correlation that you may know about between uh, exercise and student performance perhaps? Studies have shown that there's an absolute correlation between your mind and your body. It's something that you can't separate. So um, you can definitely equate some student success with general health and fitness. If you're feeling good, if you can breathe, if your heart and lungs are strong, if your back is strong, it's going to allow you to be more alert in class and just in general feel better. Great. Thank you, Diane. This is Joey De Silva reporting for Around BCC. For our next story, we will look at the marine biology course here at the campus. Hi. Did you even know that Bristol Community College offered a marine biology course? Today, we're going to be hearing from Dr. Mary Rapine, professor of marine biology. I consider myself having taught marine biology for 10 years or so because I used to teach to children. I've done a lot of informal education to small children. So I love deep sea biology. That's the thing that fascinates me the most. I'm thinking about things that we haven't discovered yet. Um, and all the organisms that are so strange and beyond what we would imagine in science fiction. I hope that students gain an appreciation for the complexity of marine life. And, um, and I think it's, it's important to learn to think like scientists and to understand the ocean as a complex environment with a lot of different factors that don't affect life on land. Best way to reach me is email. Um, 
that's mary.rapine at bristolcc.edu um, or stopping by my office in L218. Hi, we've heard students saying, how can I continue my education at a four-year college if I am having problems affording my education here at a community college? Well, we may have some answers for you. Today, we are bringing you an interview with Eileen Shea, Director of the Transfer Program Center here at BCC. She shared some valuable information regarding the transfer program and the center itself. Hi Eileen, it is a pleasure having you with us today. Hi Denise. What is the mission of the transfer program? Well, I would say simply it's to provide transfer information and transfer services to students who are interested in continuing their education and going on to a four-year college or university. And we work with students to try to make that process as seamless as possible. What are some of the services the Transfer Center has to offer to the students? And how do these services help the transfer process? We have a whole array of different services available to students. Um, we offer transfer counseling and transfer advisement to help students, you know, figure out which courses they should take while they're here at BCC. Um, we help them figure out how to do a four-year college search, you know, to probably, you know, to try to decide what are the best colleges, what's the best match for them in applying to a transfer college or university. Um, we review transcripts, we go over scholarship opportunities, um, we put them in touch with four-year college representatives who come on campus for various events, you know, throughout the semester. So um, there's many, many services we provide. I think the services are extremely helpful if students find us and contact us as soon as possible when they get here at BCC because there's lots of things that they should be doing ahead of time, you know, if they're planning to transfer in two years after they graduate. Um, there's lots of transfer scholarship opportunities that students need to be aware of. How does BCC promote the Transfer Center and its benefits? Well, you know, we have a, an extremely extensive transfer website, and if you've been on the transfer website, you'll see that that's a place where we list all of our transfer agreements, all of our transfer course equivalency guides. So it's a good resource for both students and advisors for that matter. What would be your advice to BCC students who are indecisive about advancing their academic achievements? Well, I think first of all, I would tell them uh, to apply, even if you think you can't apply it, because Financial aid and uh, transfer scholarships are a good way to pay for your education at a four-year college. But in addition to that, there are many transfer scholarships that students can apply for if they have good grade point averages. And those are all listed on the transfer website with the deadlines and the application process and everything that they need to know to apply for a transfer scholarship. And I think an important thing to know is that last year, our transfer students received over $900,000 in transfer scholarships. And it's important to understand that these scholarships were not based on financial need, they were based on merit. So it didn't matter whether or not financially you needed the money, this was based on how well you did academically here at the college. And, you know, most of the scholarships did require a 3.5 or above, but there is money available if students have to be committed to the process of doing the scholarship applications and writing the essays and getting the letters of recommendation. And, you know, it's a process and it takes time. So if the student is committed to that, there is money available out there. This is Denise Pumaguaye for Around BCC. Our thanks go out to instructor Ricardo Rabello and the students of this fall's COM 157 television production class. Great job done again by all. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this.
For the 13th year, BCC was host to a celebration of diversity at the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Breakfast. The life and times of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was once again celebrated at this year's breakfast. As has been the case in the past, the event featured musical performances and the presentation of awards to area youth who participated in the annual poster contest. The keynote address was delivered by Dr. Donald Montero. He used his time to tie in the strides made by African Americans with the inauguration of President Barack Obama. Today, as President Obama is sworn in, we have arrived, if you want to take it black or white, as a black, you have one of everything now. You have a car, you have a lawyer, you have a doctor, you have a construction owner, you have a business owner, and now you have a president. So tell me what else is owed on that check. It is up to us, and this is again, when I look at the young people, the dream. Martin Luther King was a dreamer. The dream's over. It's become a reality. It's up to you as to what you take it to be. Let it be a dream that we can look down into that valley where we see the little black children and white children playing. Let it be in that valley where former slave owners and slaves now sit and drink coffee and talk about yesterday. Yesterday is yesterday. Remember what we said about Martin. I don't look backwards. I only look to tomorrow. And you're to the tomorrow. We're to today. You're to tomorrow. 2005 BCC graduate Mohamed Kante was presented with the 2013 Distinguished African American Alumnus of the Year Award. Kante is working on the development of a robotic arm to assist the disabled. He's also working on a project called iNerd, designed to help digitally connect his native countrymen in Mali. iNerd stands for New Education for Radical Development. It would empower young Malians and encourage them to be innovative, to create a long-lasting economy growth. The iNerd would change Malian from passive technology users to active makers of technology. That would impact the community. Because I understand nobody can find a solution to their problem better than, than, than themselves. It will then promote a constant innovation by rewarding innovators and providing them with intellectual property rights. Because I believe only when intellectual property is firmly protected and the innovators are properly rewarded that innovators will start sharing their knowledge. They say in order to predict the future, you have to take part of, of its creation. I predict an Africa with an industrial revolution, which will then stimulate a lasting economic growth. The breakfast was the unofficial kickoff to the college's African American History Month activities, which take place this month. Visit the college's website for more information. BCC continues to take advantage of state and federal opportunities to get those who serve our country in the military back to school. BCC was the host to other state public colleges and universities at a forum to promote efforts to welcome servicemen and women back to college. Massachusetts Lieutenant Governor Tim Murray spoke at the event and pointed out that initiatives on the state and federal level are making it easier for veterans to afford to return to school. He also points out the Commonwealth is looking at ensuring that the veterans' military experience be taken into account as they complete their education. Thanks to the Valor Act, which was signed, Governor Patrick signed this past year, uh, which stands for Veterans Access, uh, Livelihood, Opportunity, and Resources, which was approved by the legislature in May of 2012, the Department of Higher Ed will soon uh, issue a statewide policy regarding the awarding of academic credits for military service. The taxpayers of this country and this commonwealth, mm -hmm. appropriately so, invest uh, uh, significant dollars in training our veterans. Many of those uh, are, are similar to academic programs, so we want to make it as easy as possible for our veterans uh, to navigate and get those credits and not having to go through programs that are redundant uh, in which they've already uh, done so. Adam McElroy served close to 15 years in the military and is back home looking to complete his degree in criminal justice at Bridgewater State University. He says his military training has, in some ways, 
made it easier for him to transition back to college. I think the, the biggest transition would be the thinking, well, for me at least, I went to Bridgewater in 93, didn't make it through. Coming back, thinking I'm going back, am I going to be able to survive it twice? Didn't do it the first time, but I knew I had different skill set, but I didn't really know how to, how to, I don't know, how to put them into use in the civilian world then. So I got there, and with the help again of the author, and my student advisor, and my, my professors, and felt I was old enough now where I used the sources with the, the tutoring service, the writing labs, and expressing that I've been out of school for about 15 years. Some of these guys are, you know, students that just came out of high school, understand this curriculum, you know, help me out. The college's Office of Veterans Educational Services is available for veterans looking for more information on returning to school. Give the college a call for more at extension 2227. The BCC men's and women's basketball squads wrap up their 2012-2013 season this month. Correspondent Alex Stylos had the opportunity to speak with men's player Eddie Tirado, who has used basketball as a distraction from the pressures of his everyday life. Eddie, can you describe what being on this BCC basketball team means to you? I mean, it means a lot, man. Um, where I came from, like, I never um, got to play um, high school basketball at all. Um, like, I've, you know, had a trouble past in life. You know, I was in a, in a detention center as a teenager, and I mean, I always played basketball. And ever since I, like, I met Coach Coach D, you know, he gave me the opportunity. I, even at the age of, at the age of 21, he gave me the opportunity to play. And so now you seem to have really uh, have a good understanding of how, what it's like to get your life uh, back together. Um, do you think it will be hard to keep it that way after you leave BCC? No, actually it wouldn't because, um, like, you know, Coach D and Coach Ford and um, Coach Smith, you know, they, inf they, they have a big influence in my life. You know, they, they, uh, they're pushing me to the right path and, you know, I got wonderful teammates, you know, that that are there for me and, you know, I'm you know, ready to take the next step. And what about being on this team? Can you describe what it's like being around the guys, what it's like, you know, game day for you? I mean, like I said, I never experienced any, anything like this. So, you know, being around these guys, you know, it's, it's something new. It's like, you know, it's like watching a movie and you're watching like, oh, Coach Carter and all that stuff. I never, like I said, I never experienced this. And, you know, this is all new to me, you know, and thanks to these guys, you know, they also gave me the opportunity. Uh, guys like Eddie, uh, has you know surpassed even my expectations um, following up with his guys caring about his guys studying with his with the, with his teammates um, he you know here every day at practice works hard um, there's been issues there's been times that I, I'm not gonna say that every day has been pre perfect but in any family's set that that you know you're never gonna have all every day be a perfect day um, but there's been times where I had to re make him refocus and give him you know, uh, kind of a lashing of saying, hey, this is not acceptable here. Um, even at times where I had to say, you know, you need to get out of my gym. And with all that, he, his fortitude, he kept building and building, building strength. And, and where, what's happened now is he's put himself in position, his GPA this past semester, you know, above a 2.8 two um, GPA. Um, and this is from a kid that, you know, couldn't get his books you know straight in high school so you see those stories of guys that come in and they stick with it um, and he's definitely one of those guys as of this taping the men's basketball team has a record of four and nine while the women sit at five and six that's all for around bcc this month i'm keith tebow thanks for watching <laughs>